today we're going to talk about accounts payable and specifically I picked two areas that's been quite of interest um, from quite a few folks um, implementing uh, Business Central and that is how to edit or update uh, information from Excel and you can do that in accounts payable you can do that in any list that's out there but I'll show you that today and how you can edit um, from the Excel and publish it back and it will update um, any of the purchase invoices that we're going to work through today. The second is um, in accounts payable if you have quite a few faxes or email um, you know invoices that are coming through um, you can scan those or if you get a mail you can scan those through and you can upload those through Cofax. Um, ReadSoft is a software that's linked in with Business Central since about 2016 and uh, keeps getting better and better and what that does is allows you to um, put this information in it'll scan it send it back to you as the fields that they see from the uh, document or invoice and put it in so that you can automatically receive it and post it. Uh, Cofax of course um, has a solution that's a trial basis and with that uh, that'll be what we're showing today they have basically two months of free trial and with that um, roughly 75 faxes or emails or um, invoices that you can put through and, and you can scan them however you'd like and so we'll show that and document that today so without further ado let's kind of get into the first area um, Business Central has really put a lot of focus in on apps here over the past couple of years and what they have done is created an app for Business Central and so you can download this from the App Source store and once you download um, this Business Central it will it's it doesn't cost anything and what it allows you to do is it creates the interface for Excel and allows you to uh, bring any kind of uh, journal entry or in this case it's going to be a purchase invoices down to Excel you can alter them and it it takes care of the logic going back in case there is not a uh, a correct field filled in it will air out and tell you what field needs to be uh, filled in with it so with that um, again I've showed you the app source um, business central as an app and so the next screen here is kind of going into that app once you have it installed. Um, you would ask, well, is there any you know links that we have to have to get this to function? Um, it's just your simple email. Once it knows that, it will know what account to go to and what um, business central um, area that it will need to register with and be a part of. Okay. So first up here is if we were doing a purchase invoice, and I'll go into Business Central here in a minute, but if we were doing an invoice and we put up uh, the vendors first up consultants and you can enter lines just like you would on a purchase order, but on this invoice you could fill them out here or you could click on what is called edit in Excel. Um, if you're not in the app and you're in the in uh, in the cloud environment, it will just say Excel, open or export, but it will not say edit. Um, <clears throat> the only way it says edit is to actually have the online app that is there installed on your local computer. Okay, from that, um, what we'll do is we would bring out a, a blank screen here it shows you that it has a bunch of multitude of tables and with that now it opens up office it recognizes your name it recognizes that you're tied in with Business Central and it provides a, a menu here that you can add new lines to what would be uh, brought down uh, from your, your purchase invoice and when you're done you can refresh it and you can publish it okay so with that let me go into and bring over Business Central 
and we can kind of show that there. So if we're here in Business Central and we want to go to purchasing and we want to go to purchase invoices, one of the things that I was going to do is just bring in an invoice that was already there and we could add to this and so what we would do from this point is click on page edit in Excel it asks you to open Excel yes and so now it wants to validate that you want to edit and enable the editing and it's going to bring over the line that was already on the purchase invoice previously. Okay, so at this point you can click new, you can add a new item, um, item and 19, let's just see what item we can pull up here real quick. Um, 1920S and about a 1906S. Um, you can do this for items. You could do it for uh, general ledger items as well or uh, ledger codes. And so let's go back to Excel here, bring it up and 1906 1906-S and with that it's a, a lamp put in your description and your location code in this case I'm going to put in east and the number of pieces 100 pieces piece um, let's just say $250 and sell it for $265. So then our total, we would need to have put in here is a, uh, the posting group. And so we would put furniture. Um, there's no use tax and the line amount is oh, two five. okay and the only thing you have to uh, add to that is over at the very end um, you have to have the document number and the line number. 209, 20,000 is the next line invoice. Okay, um, I can come out here and publish that. It'll tell me if there's an error with it. Uh, it's given me that it's published successfully and the workbook's updated. So with that, you can see, once I come back to this screen, hit F5 and now this line has been added and you can repeat that process as long as you would like quite a few people like to um, edit in Excel and then from that of course you can let me put the East location in that and now you can release it and post it just like you normally would well, this functionality, again, I've, I've repeated myself, but this is um, ability to do this in any of the journals, any of the lists, and any of the purchase invoices that you would like, and it will function just like a normal Excel, but it brings it back to Business Central. At this point, it's finishing up the processing. And if you wanted to see the purchase invoice that was created, 
you can kind of see out here, these are the two line items that I brought across. Okay, um, that's a helpful um, tip. Quite a few have asked for. The second one we wanted to kind of go through today is the um, going online to use the um, object character recognition. And what that's um, doing for you is allowing you to, instead of manually entering all of your invoices, you can scan them in and you can upload them. And with that, uh, it will be automatically entered. Um, there is a fee. And so um, with that, I'll show you that. Um, let me get over here to the browser. Um, Cofax. And read soft. So some of the features, um, I accept that. I wanted to show you the uh, what they have for their different levels. Um, well, it's not picking that up. But here's the site. You can go on to that, and there is a free, um, I believe that up to like 3000 a month is the next level, and they're very reasonable. Um, it does get quite pricey after you get past uh, three to 5,000 invoices a month. Um, but if it's enough time to save um, entry, and maybe it's enough time to save an employee's uh, time, then it's well worth the option there for you. Okay, so what I wanted to show you here is um, get back into it, Cronus. And so you need to be in the business manager role uh, desktop. And so if you validate that, you go to uh, my settings and you just look up here on the role and it's business manager. This gives you quite a few different features that are not available on just uh, an accountant's um, role desktop. And so one of them is um, my incoming documents. And so you can see I have one here. Um, I can kind of go into this one or I can look up. And so when I go into it, I can validate OCR and see if there is one that, that's been sent. And so And what it's telling you here is that there was a map um, for the GL account code for Fabricam. So we have to just fix that. Okay, and with that, um, let's take a look at what you would hit here is the OCR. You'd send this to, you'd send this to OCR service. From that, um, it would tell you that it's been sent successfully. And once you're there, you can go into uh, Cofax or ReadSoft Online, see that it's praying processed. And when it comes back, now it comes back into here.
and you can upload that and receive it from uh, OCR and then it says that it's been successfully received and now you're ready to process, create the document, and open the record. It was asking for that, for the vendor name. Now, uh, COFAX says that they will allow you to send back any document that doesn't have a field filled in correctly and they will update that in their records so the next time they send you a fax um, that's automatically included. Um, what you're seeing here is that not only does it bring in all of the information about that, it did miss the vendor's name and you can kind of see Fabricam is over here on the right, um, very small text. So you'd either have to circle this or put it in a square and send it back to COFAX, but everything else did come in. Um, the vendor number, um, the vendor invoice, the date, the items, the quantity, the description. From there you can post it as normal and once you post it now you are um, you're done. So before uh, you'd have to take that invoice and manually enter it if this is some help on how you can save some time, um, it's sure available to you and you can test it out for free and see if it's a, a workable solution for you. Um, I think with that, I think we're over on time, but let's see. Well, we've got just a few minutes. Is there any questions out there? Hey, thanks, Lynn. Um, it doesn't look like there are any questions at this time. Okay. Uh, was there anything you wanted to add before we go ahead and wrap up? No, we'd like to do one more session and, and show the processing next time uh, on accounts payable for the next session and show some tips and tricks for that area. Um, there's a few tricks up our sleeve that uh, Microsoft has been quite good with. And so, yep, uh, for the next session, it's kind of a part two for accounts payable. Okay, great. And um, I do want to remind everybody joining us today, please send us your recommendations on future topics for our BC Educational Series. Um, I just want to reiterate that these are for your benefit, and so we want to provide uh, the topics that you care about the most. So if there's any training or tips and tricks or challenges you're having with Business Central that you would like to see in a free BC Educational Series webinar in the future, please let us know. Um, you'll have our follow-up email, which you can respond to um, to do that. Lynn, would you want to go ahead and move to the very last slide for me, please? Sure. Let's, uh, let's get down here. So questions, and then there we go. There you um, go. Yep, for anybody who does not have Dynamics 365 Business Central, but you're looking at it, um, for your organization, we offer ERP fit gap assessments, which is a no charge, no obligation, one hour and remote consultation where we can dive into your goals for your technology both in the long term and the short term as well as your budgetary perspectives and see if Business Central is a good fit for your solution. So if that is something you're looking at, please feel free to register for the Fit Gap assessment there. Uh, again, you'll have that link in the follow-up email as well. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Lynn, for presenting today. And um, until next time, I hope everybody has a great afternoon.